For these theorems that we're going to talk about, you do need your proof cards, so please make sure to have those out for this portion of the video. The first one is the right angle congruence theorem, and that says that all right angles are congruent. But let's write that in if-then form on your card. So remember that would look like if angles are right angles, then they are congruent. So that's what you want to be keeping an eye out for when you do some proofs. If you have a if you have something that says angles are right angles, then you can also say that they are congruent. So that's a nice step to have. The congruent supplements theorem. This is a nice shortcut as well. This says that if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, or if they're supplementary to congruent angles, then they are congruent. So let's think about something like that for a minute. Let's say we have um, these three angles, angle one, angle two, and angle three. And notice that angle one and angle two, they look like they would, if we joined them together, if we moved them together, they would join a straight line. Okay, so let's say we knew that angle one and angle two are supplementary. So it might be like if angle one and angle two are supplementary, and we would also need to know that angle two and angle three are supplementary. See how they look like they would be on the same straight line? And angle three and angle two are supplementary. Then what we would know is that angle three and angle one are congruent. Okay, um, something a little more concrete, let's say this is angle two is, um, oh, what does that look like? 130 degrees. So that would make angle one, if angle one is supplementary to that, that would make angle one 50. And since angle three is also supplementary with that 130, that is also 50. So you can see why angle one and angle three would actually be congruent. All right, so the second one is the congruent complements theorem. It's much like the congruent supplements theorem, except we're dealing with complementary angles. So if two angles are complementary to the same angle, or if, that, if it's not the same angle, it's congruent angles, then the two angles are congruent. So again, if we look at this diagram, if I look at four and five, you see how those look like they would make a right angle? So if I knew that angle four and angle five are complementary, and I would also need to know that angle five and angle six, so this might be a little less obvious, but it looks like those would be uh, complementary as well. So if angle six and angle five are complementary, then what do we know? Then angle four, these two, angle four and is congruent to angle six. Okay, so again, if we wanted a specific example, let's say that, let me get rid of these. Let's say that angle five is 60 degrees and angle four would have to be 30 in order for those to be complementary. And angle six would also have to be 30 for those two to be complementary. So then four and six have to be congruent. Okay. In class, we'll do a proof of that so you can see why that always works. All right, let's do our own proof, though. And we're going to look at this one. So notice that we don't have anything filled out for us, so we have to do the thinking. So let's look at this diagram see what we're given. Angle one and angle two are complementary. 
All right, so what does that mean? And I'm going to mark in my diagram so that I remember this, that that would be a right angle. And then we also know that angle 1 and 3 are congruent. So I'm going to mark those with arcs. And then angle 2 and angle 4 are congruent. I'm also going to mark those with arcs, but I'm going to mark those with double arcs. Okay, so we're trying to show that 3 and 4 are complementary. So we are trying to show that um, angle 3 plus angle 4 equals 90, or um, if we can somehow use the congruence complement theorem, then maybe we can use that as well. All right, so um, let's write our given. Angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. And we also know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Okay, that's our given. All right, so then let's figure out why that would be true. All right, so if we look at this diagram, angle 1 and angle 2 add up to be 90 degrees, and that is comprised of this green angle and that blue angle. So if we look at 3 and 4, that's also another pair of green and blue angle. So then we should know that that also equals 90, which means they're complementary. So the way I was thinking that through, that tells me that I need equations because I'm adding up angles uh, together to be a, a bigger angle. So I'm going to be using some angle addition postulate and using our definition of complementary. So let's, let's write some of that out. So I said that angle 1 and angle 2 have to add up to be 90 degrees. So let's write that. The measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 has to equal 90 degrees. And how do I know that? That's the definition of complementary. That should be on your first set of proof cards that we did. Okay, so now let's look at some angles. Now we have angles that are congruent. Let's say let's change those to be equal so I can do some substitution with them. Let's say that the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle three, and the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle four. Okay, so that's just the definition of congruent angles. You can also just write definition of congruence because we, we kind of combined angles and segments together on one of our proof cards, and that's fine. Okay, so then what does that mean? I can replace angle 1 with angle 3, and I can replace angle 2 with angle 4. So let's do that. So instead of writing angle 1, I'm going to write the measure of angle 3. And then instead of writing the measure of angle 2, I'm going to write the measure of angle 4. And all that is is substitution. Property of equality. All right, so we have just shown that angle 1 plus angle, or angle 3 plus angle 4 equals 90. And that's what we are trying to show it or trying to show that they're complementary so we only have one more step angle three and angle four are complementary and that's we know that because that's what the definition of complementary right so anytime you're changing from the equation to the words, right, that's just what that word means. That's the definition. Great. So let's move on and do some more theorems. So now we have the linear pair postulate. All right, this is important. We've been using this, actually, when we've been solving some of our equations, but now we have a postulate that says it. If two angles for a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So if I know angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair, then I know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 
equals 180. So I think we I think you guys understand that. We've been using that for a while, but now we have a name for that. And then we also have the vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles are congruent. All right, so like angle one and angle three would be congruent. So if you see that they are vertical angles in a, in a diagram, then you can say that vertical angles are congruent. Okay. All right, so looking at this diagram, if angle three is a right angle, so let's mark that, and the measure of angle five is 57 degrees, then we need to find all the rest of the measures, angle one, angle two, angle three, and angle four. Well, angle three has to be 90, right? Because that's what a right angle is. Okay, so then what else can we say? Well, we know that all of these would add up to be 180. So then I know that I just need the remainder of that 180 for angle four. So that would be Let's see, 33. Is that right? 33, yep. Okay, and then let's see, what else can we say? Angle 5 and angle 2 are vertical angles, so those would be congruent, so that's 57. And then angle 1 is a linear pair with 57. So that would make that 123. And now we found all of them. So we're using linear pairs and vertical angles. To help us with that. All right, so let's do a proof. And th in this one, what, what I want you to notice is we're given angles one and three are vertical angles, and we're trying to prove that um, angle one is congruent to angle three. So we're trying to prove the vertical angles theorem without having to use that theorem. All right, so this is whenever, it's like when you define a word. Whenever you define a word, you don't use that word in your definition. So if I'm trying to prove a theorem, I don't use that theorem in my proof. Okay, so if I know that these are vertical angles, then all that tells me is where they're located. Okay, so the fact that they are vertical angles tells me what the diagram looks like. So it looks like this, okay? So really, they could have just said, given the diagram, prove that angle one and angle three are congruent. All right, well, but we can use the linear pair postulate. So let's, let's say that um, we know that angle one and angle two would be a linear pair, right? So those would be supplementary. So we'll be able to say that. And then let's also do that two and three would be supplementary. And since they're supplementary to the same angle, then we can say they're congruent, right? So that's like our congruent supplements theorem. So let's do, let's do that. That might be pretty quick. All right, so first we're going to state our given. Angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. Okay. And then we can say... Angle 1 and angle 2 are linear pair. No, we're not going to say they're linear pair because that's, again, given. Okay, it's from the diagram. But what we're going to say is angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. Okay, and how do we know that? Because in the diagram we see they are a linear pair. So that's the linear pair postulate. Okay, now the, we also know that 2 and 3 are supplementary for the same reason. So I'm going to put that along with our statement 2 as well. Okay, so those sets of angles are supplementary because they are both linear pairs. Okay, and you see that they are supplementary to the same angle. So I can say angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And that's by the congruent supplements theorem. You see how I'm abbreviating that. Okay. And we've proven what we were trying to prove. So that was a very short proof, three steps. So like I said, we'll prove the congruent complements theorem and the congruent supplements theorem 
in class. It'll be something very similar to this, and we'll do a lot more proofs.